thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if I get this back in. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you. What an amazing night this is. What a tremendous honor it is to be the next congressman from Louisville and be our democratic voice in Washington. Thank you. There's Greta. First of all, I, I do want to note, we haven't won every race we wanted to tonight. I want to commend my friend Charles Booker on a hard fought campaign. Yep. And look, he, he campaigned hard. He made history in Kentucky. And while the votes didn't go our way in that race tonight, I believe we are truly all better off for his candidacy and his campaign. I also want to acknowledge my opponent, Stuart Ray. I just got off the phone with him. I can tell you, campaigns are tough. He ran a good race. Now that it's over, I truly look forward to representing everyone, whether you voted for me or not. <laughs> to paraphrase the old spiritual, from Louisville to Frankfurt and now to Washington, I am glad to be in your service one more time. <laughs> 10 years ago, we ran for the state senate. The twins had been home from the hospital a matter of months. The dry sink in our dining room had been repurposed to a changing table. And when the campaign started, we simply moved the, the diapers off the dining room table and that became our campaign headquarters. The unfinished basement became our yard sign distribution center and factory. It would have been almost impossible to imagine a night like tonight. But our premise for running was as simple as our operation. That is, I'm going to go to Frankfurt. I'm going to stand up and fight for people. I'm going to stay true to our values while working to get stuff done. And that's exactly what I did. Despite serving in the super minority every single day I was in office. I was leading the fights on key democratic issues, even being elected democratic leader of the Senate when a guy named Matt Bevin was governor. I, but despite all that, I authored and passed 18 bills into law. And not just little stuff either. We passed the first health insurance mandate in 21 years. We passed laws protecting victims of human trafficking and domestic violence. I passed the first ever bill that solely benefits Louisville's historically black college and university, making sure that kids at Simmons College got access to Kentucky tuition grant money. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't always easy, but I have never accepted the notion that we can't do something. If we're willing to listen, if we are willing to work together, if we are willing to build consensus instead of finger pointing and name calling or spreading misinformation, there is no limit to what we can achieve. Last summer, we took the kids on vacation. We went to the beach. And in the ultimate dad nerd move of the century, I took them away from the pool to go to the Kennedy Space Center. It was awesome. <laughs> and when we walked in, we went into the IMAX where they talk about the shuttle Atlantis. The shuttle Atlantis, I didn't realize, shuttle Atlantis is a cool thing. Somebody came up with the radical notion Let's send a reusable space shuttle into space, not just a rocket that falls off in the ocean. Let's bring it back down to Earth. Took them 12 years to figure it out. They're showing the IMAX. Sure enough, the music's going. Greta's running around my feet with her toy space shuttle. The plane's getting ready to land on the tarmac. The screen goes up, and there is the shuttle Atlantis behind us. And I'm like, <laughs> 
Because to me, that's it. That's what our government can do. We can build a reusable space shuttle. We can put a man on the moon. We can work with private industry and speed up the distribution of a vaccine in nine months that enabled all of us to get back to our daily lives. Because when the will of the American people and the weight of our government get behind a problem, we can solve it. And we have big problems to solve. We still must continue to help people lower costs, starting with prescription drugs. We can combat the immediate threat that is climate change. We must make sure that we as Kentuckians are at the forefront of this. We paid for the last energy revolution. We paid for it here. We led it and we paid for it. We paid for it with the majesty of our mountains and the lives of our miners. We should be at the forefront of the next energy revolution, creating good paying green jobs right here in the energy center of the world. And our great governor, Steve, or our great governor Andy Bashir has done an amazing job on that front, bringing $7 billion in economic development and to make us the electric battery car manufacturing capital of the country. We need a federal partner to build on that success. We can end generational poverty. We can ease hunger. We can create more affordable housing. We can finally make much needed investments in education, starting with examining the decades old model of education. Let's start with public preschool and let's continue to invest in our higher education. We can address systemic inequities and racism head on and make sure that everyone has an equal chance at achieving the American dream. There are times when this might not seem possible. We are waiting to hear results from around the country tonight. But no matter what happens, I want us to think about our challenges differently. My friend Joni Jenkins reminded me recently that if we win tonight, our job is to keep fighting for people and make a better tomorrow. But if we lose tonight, our job is to keep fighting for people and make a better tomorrow. We don't get to vote for 435 members of Congress. We get to vote for one. And I promise to do my best to keep us moving in the right direction. The reality is our American experiment has never been perfect. Our greatness comes from our continued willingness to work toward that more perfect union. I am so excited to begin this journey, but I wouldn't be able to do this without the help of so many who've been there for me along the way, many of whom are here tonight. I first of all have to thank my amazing staff and my amazing campaign team for all the work they've done over the last 13 months. They have run an amazing operation. I want to hear a big shout out for the men and women of organized labor for being our boots on the ground and creating the middle class here in this community and in this country. I've got to thank all of my family and friends, starting with my parents on the front row and everyone here whether you put up a yard sign, whether you knocked on a door, whether you helped with the campaign, whether you even just watched the kids when we were busy, to all of you, thank you. I want to thank someone who's not here tonight. And for those of you who knew him, my friend David Hopp, while not physically present, is here tonight as well. And I thank him. I want to thank Congressman Awesome, John Yarmouth. For his incredible 16 years of service. And this is important. 
You guys remember about John Yarmouth. Yes, he's up here giving the speech. Yes, he gets the ovations. Yes, he's chairman of the House Budget Committee. But I want you to think back to this night 16 years ago. Nobody thought this was possible. In fact, John, I went back and I pulled the Cook Political Report's final update of the 2006 campaign. And here's what they said. November 6, 2006. Representative Ann Northup will win re-election over John Yarmouth. There are signs Northup is very worried about her re-election prospects. But Yarmouth isn't a much stronger candidate than the one Democrats fielded in 2004 when she convincingly won with 60% of the vote. We suspect, Yar we suspect Northup finds a way to win. John Yarmouth not only won that race, he set forth the blueprint of what it means to run as a Democrat in Jefferson County and Kentucky. They said he couldn't win, and they said he couldn't win because he'd been at the Leo. He'd written so many things. He'd championed so many wonderful causes. They said he can't win. He's written too much down of what he thinks. Well, let me tell you how his career ends. It ends with him writing the American Rescue Plan Act and the infrastructure bill that has put our country on the right direction. John, from the bottom of all of our hearts, thank you. And last, but certainly not least, I want to thank my family. The reality is you do not run for office alone. This campaign hasn't been short. It hasn't been easy. Since, since we've started running, the kids have actually become eligible for vaccines. They've changed grades. Greta had a tooth pulled because she busted it out. They've all learned the importance of card signs and knocking on doors. And then there's Chris. I'll tell you of all the speeches I've given, of all the parts I've written, this has been the hardest. It seems perfunctory to thank a spouse. There is nothing perfunctory about Chris Danner McGarvey. We have been dating for 21 years. She is the love of my life. She makes me better in every way, whether she's challenging or praising, and mostly challenging. <laughs> she is the breadwinner of our family. She does the invisible work that so few people get credit for because she's the one who keeps track of the soccer schedule. She's the one who gets contacted for play dates. She's the one who's worried about whether the uniform's clean or the lunches are made. And she does it all without anybody seeing her sweat. She quite simply is the star that keeps the rest of us in orbit. And we couldn't do this without her. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for your support. And we look forward to being your representative in Washington. Thank you.